everybody, good morning. My name is Lauren Hupner and I am a tour guide for Touring Israel. And I'm here today to show you a little bit about St. George Monastery and a little later on, take you some other places here in the beautiful Judean desert. Now, we're just getting out of the coronavirus lockdown, so things are starting to open up a bit here. But at this site, it's still, as you can see, very, very quiet. Usually, uh, we have lots of people here, but right now it's nice and quiet, so it's good for us to, to, to look and see. So if you look down here, you see this is a monastery that its origins are in the fourth century CE, when the monastic movement, uh, the Christian monastic movement started out of Egypt and moved its way to the Judean desert. At its height, there may have been over 10,000 monks in various monasteries in the area. And we're gonna take a walk down, so we'll have more to talk about as we get further down into the, into the area. So we've doubled back from the lookout we just saw, and we're now here at the main gate for the hike down to the monastery. Uh, the monastery was rebuilt in the late 18th century by the Greek Orthodox Church. And this is the gate, you can see the Greek up there. Uh, we'll get into a little bit more of the history uh, when it was built, destroyed, rebuilt, abandoned again. Uh, come on, let's go down. From the lookout, when we were looking down, you might have been wondering, where do they get water from? Middle of the desert. If you look what we just filmed, there are lots of underground springs here, and a water channel here was built. And one of the amazing things is you can see, middle of the desert, but on the boundaries of the water channel, green everywhere, because the water, the water is uh, helping the stuff grow. You also see in the distance here, a lot of caves where monks would have been isolated. This monastery is called a Laura. A Laura is a monastery where monks come, are isolated in caves, and meet up once a week. That's how it was in the fourth century. Uh, there are different types of monasteries. We'll talk about it as we get further down. Almost made it all the way down. Actually, we're a little lower than the monastery now, so we have another hike a bit up. So we'll get there. If you look at what you see now, you're saying, wait a second, Lauren said this was built in the fourth century, but this doesn't look like it's 1500, 1600 years old. And, and you're right, because the Greek Orthodox Church, they rebuilt this in the end of the 19th century. Because it was built, it was destroyed in the seventh century by the Persian invasion, rebuilt by the Crusaders in the 12th century, after the Crusaders were booted out by uh, the Muslims, pretty much went into disuse. And then at the end of the 19th century, the Greek Orthodox, as I said, they rebuilt it. And it's actually an active monastery. There are monks that are living here. So let's continue and see if we can get in. I'm not sure if it's open or not, but we'll go see. Again, so we're getting closer. We're now on the bridge connecting the Wadi or the Nachal with the, with the monastery. And I'm gonna read for you now from Psalm 23 and you'll understand why in a minute. So Psalm 23 goes, The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He maketh me to lie down in green pastures. He leadeth me beside the still waters. He restoreth my soul. He leadeth me in the paths of righteousness for his name's sake. Yea, I walk through the valley of the shadow of death I will fear no evil, for thou art with me, thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Now, why did I read that? Because as per tradition, 
the shadow of death is what this bridge is going over. So I thought it was apropos to read that psalm when we're standing right here. Let's go up to the monastery. So we made it all the way down. Uh, the monastery itself is closed today because of the corona, uh, but still a beautiful hike. Usually it's open from 9 till 1, so when we're after this crisis, we'll definitely come back and go in. But since we're already down here, just a couple of words. What is a monastery? What types of monasteries are there? So, like I said, Christian monastery, uh, Christian monks started in the 3rd, 4th century, 3rd, 4th century, originated in Egypt. There are three types. One is a hermitage, hermit, a monk who's secluded, stays by himself in a cave. Then there was a laura. Laura is a bunch of monks secluded in caves and come out and meet usually once a week on a Sunday for a communal meal. And then there's canumbium, which is more of a community of monks that they have chores, they work. You know, we have monasteries here where the monks produce olive oil and wine, so on and so forth. So. That's what the different types of monasteries. Why here? Why in the Judean desert? Because the monks, the monks on the one hand, they want to be isolated, get closer to God, replicating the experiences of John the Baptist, who was considered the first monk. Uh, but it's also very, very close to Jerusalem. So you're isolated, but well within an easy day uh, journey to Jerusalem. So it was very convenient for them to be here. And that's why, as I said, there were thousands and thousands of monks here during the Byzantine period. Now we're gonna try to go all the way back up, so bear with us. We'll have one more stop on the way, explain one more thing, and we'll see you on top. So, we made it up, heart's racing a little bit, but drinking some water and we're okay. From here we're gonna go a little more north from here to a place called Qasr al-Yahud. Uh, not only is it the place where it says that uh, Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, a few other things related to the Old Testament there. We're gonna get in the car and go there. See you soon, bye. Hey everybody, so. We're here now at Qasr El Yehud. As I said, this is the Jordan River. And Jordan River, so what would you expect? Across the river, and this is Jordan. You can see the Jordanian flag, monastery. Again, because of the corona, the site is closed now for baptism. So we see there's some Jordanian workers working on their side of, of the site. So like I said, this is a site where it said that Jesus was baptized by John the Baptist, where he really, this is really where the start of his three years of, of being, of ministering uh, began. Uh, after he was baptized here, he went for 40 days into the desert, uh, which corresponds to other things that happened at the site. It said at this site, this is where Joshua and Bnei Israel, children of Israel, entered the land of Israel after the 40 years of wandering in the desert. So it's the prefiguration of the baptism of Christ. They entered the land, Christ was baptized, also went for 40 days into the desert to, be, to overcome temptation. Also what happened here, we talked about Elijah the prophet, Eliyahu Navi at uh, St. George Monastery, where he was hiding from King Ahab and, and, and Jezebel. Here is where Elijah, ascended to heaven in chariots of fire and passed on the mantle to his protege, Elisha. Uh, so really three main events that happened at this site. This site was part of Jordan after the War of Independence. So from 1948 to 1967, it was under Jordanian control. After the 1967 Six-Day War, Israel took control. 
But because, as, as you see, the border is, is very narrow, it's very easy to come across. There were a lot of uh, terrorists coming across from, uh, from, from this area. So this whole area, and we'll see when we go up a little bit, it was all full of minefields uh, planted by the Israelis. So the site was closed. It was closed until, from 67 until 2011. For the Christian pilgrims, an alternate site was opened in, at the northern Jordan, uh, Jordan River near the Canaret, called the Yardinit. Uh, but everyone knew that was really a, it was an alternate site. This is, this is the traditional site. Uh, and according to the Bible that they crossed at Beit Arava, which is near here, it's, it's pretty conclusive that this would be the place where Jesus was baptized and that where, where uh, Joshua and Bnei Israel crossed the river. Uh, the Pope was here in the early 2000s uh, and basically I think that was the impetus for the Israeli government to start working to open the area. They cleared some of the mines and now all of the mines should be cleared so the monasteries will be can be reopened. There are monasteries here from the Byzantine times. Again, when we go up a little bit, uh, we can get maybe a shot of the monasteries and this should turn into a major tourist site because this is really, this is probably the third most holy place, uh, or third or fourth most holy place of Christians in the whole world. The holiest place is the Church of the Holy Sepulchre where Jesus was crucified and buried. Uh, the Mosque of the Ascension on Mount of Olives where he ascended to heaven. Uh, and the Church of the Nativity in, in Bethlehem where it says that he was born. And this place where he was, where he was uh, baptized. So very, very important to the Christian uh, religion. Uh, again, very interesting, very quiet today. I've been here quite a few times where it's full of pilgrims going in, getting baptized with their ministers, with their priests in ecstasy. Uh, it's sort of surreal as a tour guide being here when it's so quiet, but let's hope that this period is over soon and we'll welcome all you tourists back and we'll be happy to guide you when you come here. Now we'll go up, up and we'll see you a little. So like I was telling you, here you can see sign danger mines in English and in Hebrew because this whole area behind me and across from me also was mined to prevent terrorists coming in. There's a project now to uh, get rid of all the mines and I think most of them are already, are already gone. So the monasteries that we see and I think there's seven monasteries in total from different churches, uh, Greek Orthodox, Romanian, Ethiopian, uh, will be open to the public, which will really develop this area into a nicer, more developed tourist site, which, tourist site, which it really deserves to be. So that's Kasser Al Yehud. Hope you enjoyed it. Hope you enjoyed St. George. We really did. I'd like to thank Jono, who spent the time in this hot day and nice hike with me, and hoping that everything opens up and we'll see all the tourists back in here very soon. Looking forward to it. Bye.